All right, so uh, everyone please be advised that we will be having open floor discussions, and that's at the end of every day. I believe it's around 445. When we have the open floor discussions, we have chairs that are reserved in the front for the speakers. So for, for, if you've sp spoken uh, for that day, uh, please attend the open floor discussions by sitting in the front row. Uh, the other thing that we'd like uh, to do is collect questions for the open floor discussions. So if you're uh, in the current century and you'd like to tweet, the hashtag would be pound sign microbiome. For those of us who are still living with the Aztecs, you could use uh, email um, and send it to nih.gov for the human microbiome vision, HM vision. And uh, even uh, more uh, older technology, you can post some questions on the poster board. We have people that are collecting uh, the questions from uh, the pound hashtag, and they'll be collected together for uh, the open floor discussions. The other thing to be aware of is that we are webcasting, and what that means is that many of the presentations, if we've gotten permission for you, uh, will be put out on the web. We are also um, pushing out uh, just uh, other scenes from the conference, so be advised, you, you may be on the webcast, even if you're just sitting in the audience. I would like everyone to be aware that we are going to have a uh, meeting report uh, that'll be a summary of the presentations as well as an assessment of the future of the microbiome and discussing what we identify as gaps, needs, and challenges. The current authors for the meeting report are Rob Knight and Jacques, and if you're interested in influencing the outcome of the report or um, uh, like to actually contribute some text, uh, please contact them and talk to them about uh, contributing. And that would be terrific. Now, presenters, uh, we're not going to mess around. We really are going to require that you reserve uh, five minutes or more for questions. And uh, you're going to be hearing this from the session chairs. But I'd also just like to remind you that it's important for you to dedicate a little bit of your talk to um, uh, addressing issues associated with gaps, needs, and challenges. And as I mentioned, if you presented for the day, uh, please sit in the front row. Okay, so now um, I'd like to just start to address really uh, why we're here, what our charge is, what we had in mind for the purpose of this meeting. And I'll say uh, at the outset, very sincerely, this meeting was put together to hear the input from the community and to broadly share that input with um, the, the staff uh, at NIH. So uh, this is what we would really like to do. We'd like to characterize the current state of microbiome research uh, for an overall 10-year vision, and we, we're taking that very seriously. Uh, we'd really like to take a look at how the study of the human microbiome is of relevance to all the institutions, so the, the, all the institutes. The, the idea here is, is that the microbiome was jump-started by funding from the Common Fund, but now it's spreading out to all the institutes, and we'd like all of them to be thinking very seriously about the implications of taking on this research. We'd like to increase awareness across all the institutes about the types of gaps and needs and challenges that we're faced with. We also know that there could be more coherent oversight of policies as things uh, spread out to the different institutes. So you could imagine issues like data release or um, getting IRB approval, identify areas where there might be uh, useful to have common resources or developing partnerships between the institutes that will benefit microbiome research. We also want to explore how NIH could be working with other government funding agencies to integrate microbiome studies into human health, but also to be thinking about uh, think initiatives like, for example, what NSF is doing with Earth's microbi microbiome communities, how these activities could be, could be uh, related together more effectively. These are the types of things that we are taking very seriously. You'll see this in the outcome of the report, and you'll see this with the discussions that we have um, during question and answer periods and at the end of the day. Okay, so again, I'd really like to thank everybody very sincerely for being here. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing somebody uh, who is our next speaker. Um, all of us know. Uh, Francis Collins is the director of National Institutes of Health. 
Uh, Dr. Collins was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in uh, 2007 and National Medal of Science for his leadership with the Human Genome Project. And I think most of you know about that. I also like to point out, um, partly because I, I saw him give a great commencement speech at University of Maryland. He's, he himself is dedicated to bench discoveries to help patients uh, uh, to, and to improve medicine. Uh, Dr. Collins has also written a lot of books that uh, I, I'm very thankful that he has started to bring our research also to the, to the minds of the lay public. And I also appreciate on a personal level that his books have started to establish a, a dialogue between science and faith, which I think is terrific. Um, I think the important thing uh, that we should all be aware of is Dr. Collins was instrumental uh, with establishing the HMP. Um, but not only that, he is responsible for all the projects that we see here, the Human Genome Project, the HapMap, Emerge, and Code. And so I think, obviously, he's had profound influence on the field of genomics. So uh, when you applaud for him, applaud the fact that he's had that impact on our field.